Hello everyone and welcome to my talk today. Um, I hope you're going to enjoy it. Uh, my name is Dixon Jones and uh, I'm an internet marketer from the UK. Uh, I'm the CEO currently of a company called Inlinks, uh, which was founded just a couple of years ago, which is an entity SEO tool. Uh, so basically an SEO tool that's based around entities. And so the concept of uh, things not strings is a presentation today. So I'm talking about the move from uh, strings to things um, in SEO, in search engine optimization, and how entities and topics are being used by Google more and more to drive their their search and their quest to organize the world's information, as they put it. If you don't know me, you may know of my previous um, life. I was the marketing director of Majestic, uh, which um, looks at backlinks. And um, I've been in the internet business since about 1999, um, ever since uh, shortly after I, I finished my, uh, uh, my university in 1988, really. And then uh, I ran Murder Mysteries for a little while and then uh, uh, started on the internet and search engine optimization. I've been there ever since and, and love it. So today I'm going to talk about a, a bunch of things here uh, and we're going to cover uh, what an entity is because I think there's a lot of um, questions about that. I think there's a lot of misunderstandings and it's really quite a concept to, to uh, quite an easy concept to understand. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the knowledge graph and what is the difference between an entity and a knowledge graph and a knowledge panel. Um, and then I'm going to look at why Google cares so much about this approach and why had it, it changed uh, the way in which Google worked and the way in which Google was uh, producing um, and organizing the world's information. Then we're going to get on some practicalities because uh, we're marketers and we don't just want to know what it's all about. We really want to know how we can uh, do something with this information. So I'm going to give you some tips on getting noticed in the knowledge graph um, and also in examining entities and how we can uh, delve into entities and, and understand them better and therefore uh, use them particularly in our SEO copy, in our internet marketing copy, so that Google better understands uh, what we're talking about. And hopefully we can get more visitors um, from organic search uh, and um, moving forward probably in paid search as well. So for the paid search marketers amongst you, this is going to be important as well. So let's start with um, what is an entity uh, or in fact, let's start with the concept of named entity recognition. So named entity recognition is also um, known as um, uh, named chunking, chunking and entity extraction. And it's a subtask of information. Uh, and this is the Wikipedia article on the concept of named entity recognition. So essentially, it's a, it's a way of running a program across content and extracting things that are already organized and understood to be entities. So named entity recognition and entities and entity are all really synonyms, really, of the same concept and the same idea. But you can also talk about entities in the form of topics. You can talk about uh, entities in the form of um, uh, 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 data entries. Uh, and so really an entity for a marketer's point of view is something that could be seen in an online Wikipedia and Wikipedia uh, online encyclopedia and Wikipedia is a, is a really good example. I, um, for me, uh, thinking about an entity as an article in an encyclopedia is a pretty good way of thinking about it. An entity is it could be a name, it could be a person, so it could be a place, could be a brand, could be um, any of those things, but it could also be the concept of walking, or it could be the concept of tower bridge, or it could be the concept of of, um, of land. Any of these things are entities, they're concepts that we understand as human beings in their own right as distinct objects. And um, Google in its documentation uses the concept of topics when they're often talking about the concept of entities. So the researchers and uh, and all the uh, the scholars use the word entities. Uh, and then I think really in the front end uh, document facing stuff that Google puts on, they, they kind of use the word topics a lot uh, in place of entities. But unfortunately that, that masks the issue because sometimes they're talking about a more general concept of topic and sometimes they are talking about, you know, an entity. But think about entity 
as an, an article, something that has that would be an article in in a uh, in an encyclopedia like Wikipedia, and you don't go too far wrong. So, what is the knowledge graph? Well, this is not the knowledge graph. This is this is a knowledge panel, and the knowledge panel is something that we've probably all seen on on Google, and it's a place in which entities are used. So this is a this is my knowledge panel, uh, and it says that Dixon Jones is an internet marketer. That's a concept, um, and the entities are well, DixonJones.com. The website is an entity. Brunel University is an entity. Aston University is an entity. The organisation DHJ Ventures is is um, is an entity, uh, and uh, so it's made up of a lot of entities, and you get very rich knowledge panels that are made up with lots and lots of entities. And I think Jason Barnard is on this uh, uh, on this um, uh, 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 conference and, and he's talking about, uh, he, he looks into the different data sources that Google brings back when it puts back a knowledge panel because, you know, those things are all feeding the knowledge panel, um, but they're really items that are made up from a knowledge graph. So a knowledge graph is a much bigger concept Essentially, it's a data encyclopedia, as I explained, um, and uh, and everything has got an ID number that relates to a thing, an idea, a name, a person, an event, something that we can get our heads around. But certainly the knowledge panel is a very good representation of where Google is using entities today. But that's not the only place. They're also using entities uh, in other tools. So if you go to Google Trends, I don't know if you've ever been to Google Trends recently, but their Trends tool used to be really good for trying to find out you know, how many people are searching for a particular term. But over recent years, they've put the concept of topics within there. And so now you can type in internet marketing, and that's a search term, but then it relates the concept or the words of certain internet marketing to three different potential ideas the topic of or the entity of digital marketing the entity of online advertising and the entity of search engine marketing all of which have wikipedia articles all of which have records within google's knowledge graph and google's knowledge graph is just one knowledge graph in the world inlinks has one wikidata is one there are many different types of knowledge graph in the world but essentially they are taking um, meaningful concepts and uh, putting them into a database form. Another place that you see uh, topics or entities is in uh, Google's Android um, phones. So their Google Discover app um, is, is a good example here. So this image shows hiking, which is an entity and a concept. Uh, and because they know that this user has had an interest in hiking in the past, um, then it pops up uh, interesting pages and websites and, and, and commentary from sites that the user may never have seen, but they have related the fact that the individual is interested in the concept of hiking. Hiking has now come out with this interesting piece of uh, content that, that is also related to hiking, so it can then reveal things to you um, using entities as well. It's not the only place that they use it. Um, you can see Google's um, use of entities in their natural language API and we're going to talk a lot more about their natural language API a little bit later in this presentation. Uh, it's used in image search and of course a big part of this is that it's used in voice search as well because Google really can only answer one thing if they're going to try and answer something. Um, uh, uh, if you're going to say you know how old was um, uh, how old was uh, Washington uh, when he died then um, really they're going to want to give you the answer and therefore they're going to need um, a database about George Washington, a encyclopedia entry in, in that's readable by a machine um, that's going to help them to give that kind of answer. So you see that there as well often. <clears throat> but why the drive uh, towards uh, this topic-based approach or this entity-based approach by Google over the years. Um, I mean, it started really, or it became very obvious to SEOs when Google bought MetaWeb for an undisclosed sum, but um, apparently a very large sum. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and uh, it, it, MetaWeb owned uh, a an open graph, a, a, a knowledge graph called um, Freebase, and that formed part of the training set for Google's own knowledge graph. So they took that information and put it into their own knowledge graph. They also took Wikidata, 
and uh, Wikipedia and uh, put that in, and they still do to this day. Um, we understand that they, uh, they they download Wikipedia on a daily basis and uh, and um, use that as a training set for their knowledge graph. So, Wiki, Wikipedia is a very very important part of uh, of um, what Google are, are using to build their knowledge graph. But why this drive? I mean, they've spent millions billions on on uh, developing this topic based approach, and they had the best search engine in the world before just based around the page rank algorithm. So what happened? Why did they want to move towards this topic based approach? Well, the idea of organizing the world's information um, by entity, by idea, and by concept is very different to the idea of organizing the world's information by web pages. So if this first incarnation at this, this top layer of, of, uh, of, of page web pages, the top top part of this chart is showing all the web pages on the internet, Google can, in its first iteration of search has had to go and try and sift through all of those pages on the internet to try and find out uh, the answer to a user's question. But by taking that information and assimilating it a bit like the Borg really in Star Trek into uh, a set of records about things then they get to a single point of truth so they can uh, take all the web pages that are talking about um, horseshoes uh, and glean that information and put it into one record for horseshoes which will still reference all of those web pages but uh, those competing ideas can then you know be argued in advance and they've got one concept for horseshoe or at least the concept of horseshoe in uh within the context of of horses and 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 one in the context of good luck because um horseshoes are, are supposedly good luck in 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 england at least so one good reason is that they have a single point of truth a second reason is that they've got um the ability to have a direct access storage so they can store that information in one place um, and uh, doesn't you know doesn't have to rely on all of the websites in the world being up for people to go and see that information um, so I, I see it as a list of topics and a list of things or a list of entities in a in a in a in a sort of well I see it because I'm a marketing guy in a big Excel spreadsheet but I know that that's not true but uh, anyway uh, an encyclopedia is a good way to look at it but also once you've got a direct a single point of truth then you don't just have to feed information in from um, uh, from web pages uh, so you could take you know lyrics from songs for example and feed those in you could take manual data and um, populate the uh, the graph that way uh, or you could have internal data from organizations and you could use that to overlay the, uh, the single point of truth. So there are quite a lot of advantages for a big, big organization that's trying to organize the whole world's information in uh, being able to have this stuff all on um, on solid state hard drives in their in their uh, in their data centers. <coughs> and uh, even though it cites where the uh, the source is from, uh, it, um, it it still uh, can get it, get that information quicker, and it can get that information much much quicker as well just because of the way it's set up so this is another way of looking at it so i i said that you know i see the uh the uh, topic graph um or the knowledge graph as a as a big spreadsheet well imagine this as the uh, a spreadsheet of all of the web pages on the internet so url 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 and on those pages there's lots of different ideas being talked about there's green ones there's blue ones, there's red ones, there's brown ones. Um, and the thing is that there are trillions of web pages out there, but there are only hundreds of billions of ideas out there, funnily enough. Uh, if you look at the biggest web page in the uh, encyclopedia in the world, it's, you know, it's only going to be hundreds of billions of, of, of records, hundreds of billions of ideas. And that's because all the web pages are talking about the same ideas in different ways and in different orders and different sequences and different contexts, but they're talking about the same ideas again and again and again and again. So instead of organizing the world's information by URL, which gives you trillions of records to look up, and you organize it by idea, by concept, by entity, it turns into having hundreds of billions of ideas to look up. So that can make things much, much faster at scale, because if you sit there and say, right, I need to find something out about George Washington, much easier to go to the George Washington record and then look up all the information you've got about George Washington than it is to look up all of the web pages on the internet and then find out which ones are talking about George Washington.
There is a downside to that, though, um, because an entity-based index uh, does reduce record size dramatically and retrieval times dramatically, but it loses diversity. A single point of truth may not necessarily be the right point of truth, and sometimes uh, it may be a debatable point of truth. So there are definitely problems to this approach, which is a, a philosophical question for another time, perhaps. But you can see the scale. And the scale goes even more, um, it is emphasized even more when you realize that um, all of the web pages on the internet are in different languages, but all of the ideas in the world are independent of language. language. So um, the Eiffel Tower, Le Tour Eiffel, um, or whatever it is in German or whatever it is in Spanish, it's the same concept, whichever language you des describe it in. So that is interesting because it gives us a uh, another dimension for moving towards an entity based index because if you've got hundreds of web pages in separate languages it's very hard to disambiguate ideas and cross reference all of those ideas however if you've got hundreds of ideas it's quite easy to translate those into 100 languages on the fly so again, you get a benefit of scale by having a single point of truth uh, and you get uh, an opportunity to, to, um, to, to scale across, across the world's information, not just uh, the, UK, the English speaking um, world. So uh, let's have a look at um, entities in Google's natural language uh, in, in Google. Um, well, Google do have a natural language processing API, which is free for every well it's not free it's free to a point and then you've got to pay for it but they have a natural language processing algorithm and uh, using that api is a start to really understanding the entities within google um, but it, in truth it's not enough so this is um, the web output from uh, a, a test page uh, that, that uses google's uh, natural language processing api and it's the the web interface so you can go and do this and find this yourself it's free you can put a bunch of text into a into a um uh, a, a google browser uh, it'll um, run their natural language processing algorithm over it and then it will show you all the entities that are coming back now the first thing is that most people don't understand and don't see uh, the, the things here. Most people will have a look at this and say, you know what, this is uh, this has ten entities coming back in this in this report, but that's actually not true. Um, for a start, um, we've got the word expert written twice, uh, three times, sorry, so three times. So either that's one thing or it's no things. Um, who knows? Uh, but certainly you haven't got three. Um, persons called expert or three experts are there unless they're referring to different types of, of, of expert um, and uh, another another example uh, here to show that this is not showing 10 uh, entities here is you've got um, basketball ball shoes well that's fine basketball shoes uh, may be an entity and maybe a concept maybe something that you would see in an encyclopedia best basketball shoes certainly isn't something that you would see in an encyclopedia so in actual fact, this particular um, natural language processing API is only returning one entity, and it's the one with the Wikipedia article link, Nike. So it's got the reference to the, uh, the Wikipedia article that makes up the, the entity. So from the way that we look at things, we treat Wikipedia articles as a, as a good, solid definition of an entity, and we treat that as our single point of truth. Uh, but certainly it would seem that Google doesn't return um, entities or it doesn't isn't always returning entities in this chart you need to look at the win the, the entities that have got a Wikipedia article link to truly understand uh, what entities are brought back and we'll talk a little bit more about the Google N NLP API uh, so the point here is that Google is not actually returning very many um, uh, entities in a body of text certainly not as many as you have on your page and so we uh, at Inlinks um, actually ran some some research. We still do run some research every week. We run an industry report, so we have a look at um, the top ten results on any given um, vertical, um, and we run Google's Natural Language API, and then we run our own Natural Language API. Now our Natural Language API is designed to be very very aggressive. It's tried to trying to find all of the entities that are in a body of content. It would seem that Google's natural language API is only returning 
entities when it's got a very good confidence level that this is the main focus of the page or where it thinks that this is what this page is about. So there is a big gap between what Google shows in its natural language API and what other NLP APIs are able to show you. And on average, we're seeing only around about 16% of entities in a corpus of content within any given industry sector is being seen uh, and reported in Google's natural language API. So it's a bit better in the real estate market. It's pretty bad in the technology market and health is somewhere in between. So basically some markets are better than others. Uh, and real estate I think is good because Google understands things like places, so cities and towns very, very well. It's very good at understanding uh, places, people, uh, brands, uh, things that start with a capital letter, essentially, is not very good at understanding concepts like, you know, uh, um, like uh, walking or um, trainers, those kind of things, more generic ideas. Google is worse at, at, at reporting these. So C Google um, does not see all of the entities and does not report all the entities that, that exist in its API. We take that technology and also put it into a topic map. So we, 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 uh, we, we use topic maps to help um, map out what any uh, website is talking about. And um, uh, so this, this, this chart here, uh, we can then map the uh, Google entities, that, the, the entities that Google sees in, in content um, and the uh, entities that um, we see in content and so in this in this particular wheel here uh, it's a list of topics so I'll show you a little bit more about that as we go through the the presentation and the ones in green are ones that Google has seen so uh, accelerated mobile pages Google has picked up as a concept as an entity about a third of the time well exactly a third of the time 33% of the time that it, it's seen the concept in, in the content um, and we could dive down into into those ideas further and we and we will do a little bit later but it means that we can um actually use this concept of search engine understanding um as a new challenge for marketers and for uh, search engine optimizers in particular because we can take the concept of how many entities google sees in a corpus of content and how many google uh, how many entities a an aggressive natural language processing or na named entity extraction algorithm is seeing in a corpus of content. And we can take one and divide it by the other and use that as a representation of the search engine understanding. How much of the content does Google understand and say that this is about in terms of entities? So the new SEO challenge really is to improve this figure. Uh, and whilst this figure, this is an, a, sort of an idea in beta, I think the concept is very, very sound. Really, if Google doesn't understand it, or if it shows a very low score, maybe you're talking a lot of faff around the subject, and maybe you just need to condense your content, or maybe Google is not picking it up because of the way in which you're saying things about topics and ideas, Google is not picking up. So trying to improve search engine understanding is kind of the new, the new top rank, you know, the new position one. So here's some tips on uh, on using entity SEO to get better search engine understanding. So this is the, the focus of the talk. What can you do to help Google understand the entities on your page better so that it, uh, that it, it reports more of those entities in its own natural language processing and hopefully uses the, uh, the understanding to better um, rank your more accurately rank your your search results. Well, remember I showed you uh, this um, th this this idea of uh, things coming back in the web interface of uh, Google's natural language processing algorithm. I, I have found that you can use capitals cleverly. So uh, I've cut and I've, I've put in uh, put put in and pasted uh, the words when I bake bread I need the dough. Um, and Google comes back and says with the entities that it understands, and you can see the Wikipedia article, the concepts of bread and dough. However, when I put bread in there with a small b, it just comes back with the concept of dough. So Google has actually um, given more weighting to the uh, capitalized words um, and treated them more like um, a, a, an entity than if you don't use the capitalization. So funnily enough, using capitalization um, cleverly in your copy um, may well help you to better highlight the entities um, for Google. Some other tips that you can use to um, uh, help your uh, 
help your content get understood in, in, in the knowledge graph or the, the knowledge graph get mapped onto your content better is to disambiguate entities in your content. If you're talking about bridge and you're talking about Tower Bridge and you're talking about Waterloo Bridge, then if you want the concept of bridge to be picked up, you've got to be careful to talk about bridge in its own context because as soon as you talk about Tower Bridge, Google will pick up the concept of Tower Bridge as an entity in its own right um, and Waterloo Bridge as an entity in its own right. Um, so uh, disambiguating entities is, is a really good idea. So uh, Dixon Jones is an internet marketer, but Dixon Jones is also um, an architecture firm that was uh, big in the uh, uh, in the 2000s, 2010s, um, and uh, until very very recently. So um, uh, you don't really want to mix those two ideas up in the same uh, corpus of content without um, disambiguating it. If you look at Wikipedia's articles, they often spend the first part of their articles disambiguating the concept and sending you off to other pages on Wikipedia if you were thinking about something similar but slightly different to the page that you're looking at. You should also add Google context so that Google understands the topic in, um, in the sentence. So um, what I mean by this is that if you just put a bunch of words on the page, <clears throat> The natural language processing part of the uh, the system is trying to take meaning out of those. It's trying to understand why those words are in that particular order. Um, and if you just put a list of bullet points and, and topics without context, uh, it's going to be very difficult for a natural language processing algorithm to understand when you talk about a horseshoe, whether you're talking about it in the context of luck or whether you're talking about it in the context of um, uh, footwear for a horse. So adding context um, allows Google to understand the topic in the sentence itself. And this is why the body of text is much more important often than the navigation of a, of a web page, because the navigation often is not related to the, to the rest of the content on the page. Also, a page that's about one topic is easier for a machine to understand and to use than a page that's about many topics. Um, and this is an interesting thing that the Google's trying to gra grapple with, and they've they're talking about talking about passage indexing now. So I think what they're talking about with passage indexing is saying, right, this section of uh, of text I'm going to index on its own right because it's going to be about this topic, whereas this passage up here is about this topic, and the one below it is about this topic. So they're uh, looking at using passage indexing to try and make their uh, understanding of the world's information better. And there's quite a lot of research to say that chunking web pages um, into, into sections is better for uh, algorithms to understand the meaning uh, uh, on a page. Uh, it's something that, that Majestic has done as well. They divide their web pages into 40, um, and all the pages on the web into 40, and they look at links in some different sections of pages because they, they think that they have different uh, different values as they go down the page. So chunking is, is, is really useful. Um, but if you are lucky enough to be able to have a website where you can do a content plan and you can use those wheels that, uh, that Inlinks produces to, to have a content plan and it'll come out with unique topics and you could then use that content wheel to, to write uh, a knowledge leadership article about each of the main topics that are on there individually. Um, and, uh, and and that theoretically would uh, mean that Google knows it's a direct hit. This page is about this topic, and if you want to rank for this topic and things about this topic, Google understands it's good. Uh, and then you can use the other page, the other the content on there to support other topics. But the way that you do that is to then internally mention. Uh, link mentions of important topics to the main page of a topic. So let's say you're talking about. Uh, horseshoes um, as a good luck charm then every time you talk about uh, um, horseshoes or horses or, or good luck or luck charms in on other pages you might link through to to the horseshoe page on good luck charms um, to uh, to try and uh, uh, reinforce where the authority is for that topic within your website so internal linking is powerful if you link based on uh, entities rather than based on keywords uh, and this move away from keywords um, becomes more and more important the more that you look at how Google is trying to organize the world's information by entities not by words uh, because the concept of horseshoe um, doesn't have two meanings um, when it's just a keyword it only has uh, two meanings when you put it in context so here's an example of where you can also 
help Google to understand the content on your page and prioritize the entities that are important to you on the page. So one type of schema that, uh, that you can use is uh, about schema. Um, and uh, this is um, actually the schema for a, uh, a, a French page um, that's about bracelets and some other things. And it's, uh, it's, it's quite easy to read this, um, even if you're not a programmer. It says that this page, this URL is about a thing called a woman and the woman is a label so the woman could be actually anything in there but it doesn't matter what you've said it is it's the same as this wikipedia page over here that defines the concept of a woman it's also a thing called bracelets and in case you don't know what it is here it's about this thing over here about bracelets now look the the woman uh, wikipedia url is in english and the bracelets url is uh, a wikipedia page in french and this is uh, because, you know, the concept of a bracelet is a concept of a bracelet regardless of the language that you put it in. Google will know that the French page for Wikipedia for, for bracelet and the English page for bracelet are the same concept. They're talking about the same idea. You don't necessarily have to link to, to a Wikipedia page, um, but we find that it's very effective. We know that Google used Wikipedia for its training sets. Um, Wikipedia is the only uh, open source um, uh, data in the world that has a solid encyclopedia in many many different languages so it's a very uh, useful place to go to basically if you don't know if a, if a thing doesn't have a wikipedia page it's not really very important is it you could argue uh i don't have a wikipedia page wish i did if someone could write one for me that'd be great uh we've also got um, another tag here mentions so we've used the about tag to say this page is about women this page is about uh, jewelry, uh, collier, and bracelets. It also mentions um, uh, the, the uh, Montreux femme and diamond and model, um, but these are secondary ideas to the main concepts of a woman, uh, bracelets, and colliers. So, using the about and mention schema, I think, is quite a clever way of helping a search engine like Google, and let's hope that Google uses it, to uh, distinguish between concepts that are you know, vaguely important on your page and, and ones that are uh, properly important. Now, we don't, you know, G Google doesn't have to take this information at all. And I certainly wouldn't um, suggest that you just, you know, say this page is about things that it isn't. And, and you can use this and get this very wrong. You've got to make your, uh, your associations as accurate as possible. Otherwise, there won't be any relevance between the um, things that you've said it's about and the context that's on the page. So you won't be reinforcing your message if you don't put only the things that this page is mostly about. And the perfect thing is to say this is about one thing or two things and mentions a few others. <clears throat> Next thing I want to talk about just before I uh, finish up is is uh, talking about writing about uh, writing using entities, not keywords. So writing SEO to uh, copy in particular is, um, is, is, is hard. And uh, in order to do it, um, you really need to delve into uh, the topics that, um, that, that, that the competitors are talking about. So this is, this is a topic wheel um, that, that we use at InLinks, um, and it's categorized the central. Uh, let, me, let me dive in here a little bit. So the, the central um, uh, wheel is actually categories of topics because we've categorized all of the uh, topics on, on Wikipedia and on the web. Um, and, uh, and then within that, we can see which web pages, um, which, which topics uh, you you your content is talking about and then which ones um, uh, your content is not talking about. So what we're doing here is we're actually looking at the um, uh, a corpus of pages that are, you know, uh, the best pages on the internet for any given search phrase. We run our natural language processing algorithm uh, uh, content uh, uh, algorithm over that content and we build a knowledge graph. So this is a knowledge graph of um, of content that is ranking for a key, I think it's you know it's it's uh, it's page rank algorithm or something like that, and so these are all the topics that are coming back in the content that's already ranking for the top ten results in a in a search engine. So this is really interesting because now we can dive in there and we can have a look at your own content. You can have a look at your own content and then compare the topics in your own content to the co topics that are um, uh, that are um, already in the content that's ranking and you can do a gap analysis so uh, we can drill down into those individual topics so I can click on any one of those words in there 
and it'll drill down and show me the underlying topic that we're talking about. So we can really see the the, the granular um, Wikipedia article about, about this concept of web traffic. And here we see a really good um, synonym um, match here because I've delved into web traffic and the natural language processing algorithm has understood here that traffic and web traffic in these in this context are synonymous. Now, obviously, the concept of traffic and cars running up and down, you know, the Champs Elysees, is entirely different to the concept of web traffic. But within this concept, within this context, they're synonyms of each other. Uh, and then we can also have a look at semantically close um, topics. So below there, there's a bunch of other topics that are semantically close to the concept of web traffic. And we've broken those down by category. So things like websites and webmaster and viral videos and Google AdSense are all uh, semantically close to the concept of web traffic within the marketing and advertising vertical. Whereas um, Million Dollar Homepage and Outbrain and Google Search are all um, entities and, and topics that are semantically close to web traffic within the concept of technology, for example. So we can use this to try and help write about um, keywords instead of, sorry, it, it's, it talk about topics instead of keywords. And we can use that in, a, in, a, in an editor. So you can take all of those topics by hand. You could look at the top 10 and, and write them all down and then start writing it out, out writing about them or you can start using a, a tool this came out um, uh, pretty pretty much yesterday um, which is uh, our new content optimization tool and editor in links and what this is doing is showing you all of the entities on the left hand side in the left hand column um, and it's showing us that we're talking about the concept of uh, competition four times and um, and our competitors are talking about competition between two and four times and in the page uh, in the in the uh, content on the right hand side we can can see the concept of competition being talked about four times. So we can see whether we're overusing or underusing uh, content. Also, this will allow you to start writing about the topics that are missing on the left hand side. And as you type and as you write, it'll pop up and say, right, now you've talked about the concept of keyword research. Great. That's super. That's great. So you don't have to use a tool like this, but you do need to, before you start writing SEO copy, you do need to go and have a look at what's already ranking and break that down into the underlying concepts, entities, topics, ideas, uh, and then make sure you talk about those entities rather than just talking about the keywords because the keywords don't have context uh, and they don't uh, scale as well. So I think that's about it for me. I'm here to answer some questions. If you uh, if you want this presentation, as you can probably see, it wasn't a standard uh, PowerPoint presentation, uh, but I have got a sort of PDF version of it. If you email um, talk at dixonjones.com with the word entity in the title, then I'll answer that. Um, uh, I think uh, we've uh, pretty much covered everything. Um, we uh, had, a, uh, had, had a, a few things we wanted to cover. Where have I got them down here? What, uh, what do we cover? Um, what is an entity? Uh, hopefully we got there. What is the difference between knowledge graph and, and, and knowledge panel? Um, knowledge graph is a database of ideas. Why does Google care so much? Well, basically, it's a, it's a scaling issue. It's a financial issue and a scaling issue. Organizing the world's information by idea is much more efficient in so many ways than it is by organizing the world's information by web pages, which is only one source of knowledge anyway. Um, I've shown you some tips on getting no noticed in the knowledge graph, things like clever capitalization. Um, I've talked about disambiguation. I've talked about how you can use Google's natural language processing um, online uh, API or online version of its API uh, or the API itself to examine entities and dig into entities and how you can use inlinks to do that and also how you can use inlinks to uh, um, to uh, have a look at SEO copy and use entities uh, and improve your SEO copy based on entities not based on keywords. Thanks very much for your time. Um, I hope you learned something and uh, I'm happy to take questions. Cheers.